Hello everybody to uh, this uh, uh, post-lecture video uh, related to today's lecture um, on, uh, if you remember, uh, today we still are talking about the PN junction, but uh, uh, today was more about um, uh, LEDs, uh, photodiodes, and so on and so forth. So uh, in this uh, post-lecture video, I wanted to do two things. Um, uh, the first one is to uh, f cover some things that we that were too lengthy to go through probably in the lecture, um, but still uh, I would like to show you uh, this content, this, these things. Uh, so uh, one is uh, to conclude to conclude some things we were talking about in the photodiode, when we were talking about photodiodes, and basically related to photodiode, photoconductive mode, and the, the operation photoconductive mode and photovoltaic mode. Uh, this links to then uh, solar cells, and uh, I would like to conclude also, we left uh, some parts regarding photo, uh, solar cells uh, we, we didn't have the time to complete uh, and so I would like to conclude that as well uh, so these are two important things um, and then uh, after that uh, I have uh, um, two applications to uh, show you one is related to um, um, photoconductors as I anticipated uh, so we, we we've been talking about photodiodes and solar cells but among the photodetectors there is also uh, the easy photodetectors let's say is the concept of photoconductors that um, I would like to to discuss with you uh, as an application as a as a um, uh, I mentioned today and another um, nice application I wanted to to show you is uh, this is more related generally to the PN junction is uh, the um, uh, power supply. So we we in in the in the last week's uh, uh, post lecture video I hinted to uh, I presented you an application of the PN junction to be used as you know a rudimental. Uh, AC DC adapter and uh, so in this application I would like to show you how in further improve that using the Zener diode so uh, at the beginning you will see uh, you know we will complete uh, the parts related to photodiodes uh, we will complete stuff related to solar cell and then two applications so have fun I'll see you next time Okay, um, so um, today in class, um, sorry, just a moment. So today in class, we were talking about, um, in, the, in the second part of the uh, lecture, uh, we were talking about photodiodes. And uh, uh, toward the end, after we had, uh, sorry, after we had uh, <coughs> discussed, if you remember, you know, the concept of responsivity. And um, uh, I briefly mentioned uh, how do we use photodiodes. So there are two ways of using them in a circuit. Uh, and, and this is the so-called photoconductive operation or photovoltaic operation. So I, I just only briefly mentioned this and I didn't go into any detail of actually the analysis. Uh, and so I would like to do this here so it is clear. So uh, I, uh, here below I will do the analysis of both uh, uh, principles together so we have a, a, a better view of what is happening. Um, so in the photoconductive operation, as I mentioned, today uh, what we do is we polarize the the pn junction in in in, a, in a, with the inverse bias so uh, as you can see we we, we can consider the, the simple circuit we can consider is this the one shown here where we have our generator of a voltage v uh, the pn junction connected in this way so that effectively is reverse biased and then a load resistor RL that is used to generate a voltage output, VO. 
It is RL time, the current that flows in this circuit. So, uh, as we said today, if uh, photons hit the photodiode, a current will flow, and this current will flow in this direction, as we said today. So, from N to P. This is the current due to the... Um, um, to the photo-generated uh, uh, electron hole pairs, and uh, on the other, so this is the circuit for the photoconductive operation. Uh, on the other hand, if I was to consider this circuit, where I've actually removed, uh, as you can see, I've removed the generator. There is no generator here. So I have just my pin junction, my photodiode, and uh, uh, the load resistor. So still the signal in output is quantified, let's say, by the voltage uh, up, uh, across the resistor RL. Uh, but obviously this time um, the, there is no external generator. So uh, the photons that hit the, the diode will generate... Uh, a certain current and we will have a certain voltage at the two ends of the um, of the pn junction and uh, we will see in a moment uh, what what these two connection types uh, mean in, in terms of in terms of uh, final uh, operation of the circuit so uh, we need to analyze these circuits. So let's start with the photoconductive operation first. So what we do is we use KVL. And uh, as we know, uh, because we here we would like to uh, approach the problem um, as we know now, uh, every time we have to deal with a nonlinear component, uh, um, we can use different ways to solve it. Uh, and the two main ones we always use is either graphically using the load line approach or uh, using the piecewise linear approximation. The third one would be using small signals, but in this case we are not interested. So uh, we, ch we choose in this case to use the, um, the graphical uh, method to solve the, these, uh, these circuits, uh, because we know the, uh, that the IV characteristic of the photodiode, as we've seen today, is something like this. Okay. So... Uh, we need to uh, find the load line for the circuits. To find the load line, we use KVL. So let's start with the photoconductive mode. So KVL, the, with the voltage from this point to this point can be measured across this path or across this path. So from the first path is, path is V, and this must be equal to, uh, so we need to go from here to here through along this path. So VD is measured from here to here, but obviously in this, uh, along this path, this means I need to measure from this point to this point, and so this is minus VD, plus RLIL. This represents what we call the load line for the circuit, because we can represent uh, I. So, so remember that uh, the current, as we've indicated in the circuit, actually is opposite to the normal notation we use for ID. ID goes in this way in our uh, whole analysis of the p-n junctions up until now. So this means that id is actually minus i, but we can find i from here. And so we can write that id is in the end this thing, which we can f better write as by splitting the terms as this first term, which is an intercept, you see this V is the generator divided by RL, the load resistor. So this is a constant and this is the intercept of, uh, of uh, uh, the line that is uh, represented ID. And then there is this term that is VD is the independent variable on the ID VD plot of the uh, PN junctions characteristic. And the slope is one over RL minus one over RL. So uh, on the ID VD characteristic of the pin junction, this is a line with an intercept in minus V over RL. There you go. 
and then uh, we can easily see that when VD is equal to V, ID is zero. So when VD is equal, um, sorry, when VD is equal to minus V, ID will be zero. So that's why I have this extra point here. another uh, point of this line and so we can draw now the line so this is the load line as you can see the slope is minus 1 over rl as it should be according to that uh, according to the uh, load line and so uh, this uh, line intercepts the iv characteristic of the uh, uh, photodiode in several points depending on ISC, depending on how much, how many photons are uh, falling per unit second on the unit area, if you like. Okay, similar things can be done for the other circuit. So as you can see for the other circuit, the photovoltaic mode, uh, we again use KVL and uh, uh, this time obviously KVL is, uh, is extremely simpler. So we can choose, for example, these two points for example, and we say, you know, this is the, the potential uh, can be measured either in this path or in this path. So with the first path is simply VD and the other path is RL IAI, which is also VO. And so uh, because ID again is minus I and we can find I from this relation, we get that ID is minus VD over RL in this case. And this is the load line in this case, as we can see, it has an intercept zero and the slope minus one over RL, which means that on the ID VD characteristic of the device, uh, we, this is a line that is the, the, red, the green one that I've shown you here. So we can clearly see what I was saying today that in photoconductive mode we are working in this quadrant of the ID with the characteristic of the photodiode while in the photovoltaic mode we are actually operating in the in this quadrant of the ID with the characteristic. And uh, uh, for the photovoltaic mode as you can see um, uh, for a given RL uh, uh, as uh, we change the photon, uh, the, the photon flux, uh, the, the intersection between the load line and the uh, DVD characteristic of this actual nonlinear device uh, identifies these operating points eventually. So uh, these, these uh, points, remember the intersection either on this plot here this intersection represent the final operating point of the circuit of the device of the nonlinear device in that circuit. So, for example, if I if the intensity of the light being used in the in the photoconductive operation uh, it was such that the characteristic was actually the, this one, then the operating point with this load line would be this one here and so the final VD would be this one and the final ISC would be this one. The current, sorry, would be minus ISC effectively because we are in the photoconductive mode. So uh, uh, the similar things can be said for the, uh, others, uh, the, the other case of the photovoltaic mode. Uh, uh, so if we assume that the uh, photon flux is such that the characteristic is uh, this one, then the intersection with the load line would be this one here. And so the actual final uh, uh, VD would be this one here and the ID would be this one here. The, the, the operating point, the final operating point. Uh, <coughs> as you can see, uh, in the photovoltaic mode, uh, the current is lower than the reference ISC as you can see, this is the actual current, this one here, not ISC. And uh, the voltage is obviously smaller than VBI. Okay. But still, what we can see here is that in photovoltaic mode, the, the circuit, in this circuit, the 
PN, the photodiode operates as a generator that has a certain voltage, VD, and produces some current that flows in this direction. Okay? That's why, photovoltaic mode. Okay, so uh, we found all these nice things. So let us uh, conclude, uh, focus uh, for a moment on the photoconductive mode. So uh, in the photoconductive mode, uh, no matter what, ID is always uh, is obviously by definition minus I, but no matter what, this is always minus ISC as we've seen in the in the plot here above. And so uh, um, I, I, the 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 current flowing in the circuit is always the current generated by the light. This is the really nice thing about this, gener this uh, uh, connection of the photodiode in this configuration. Uh, VD can be found instead, uh, once uh, we know ID, which is minus IC, uh, we can find VD from the uh, load line. So uh, from the load line, uh, we can say that, remember that the load line was uh, uh, was, um, uh, what is it, this one here, ID equal this thing, and so ID is minus ISC, and so we can solve this equation to find VD, and VD is obviously this quantity. And so once we have VD, we can uh, uh, calculate, uh, uh, we found basically everything of the circuit, and so finally we can say that for the photoconductive mode of operation, uh, uh, the circuit we've seen above, uh, I is effectively ISC. Uh, we can realize it from here. I must be equal to ISC. VD is the one we just found. And the VO is uh, RL time I, and so ISC, because I is ISC. And so if we remember now that ISC is uh, E eta E, time p, the power of the photon divided by, the, by e, we really see that uh, using a photodiode in the photoconductive mode, we, where we effectively uh, are measuring the output of this uh, uh, sensor now uh, uh, as a, the, the voltage drop across the load resistor RL, uh, we can immediately see that VO is proportional to the amount of uh, the photon flux effectively, yeah, because ISC uh, is proportional to the photon flux. And this is really good. So we have a, a circuit that is uh, capable of uh, responding, uh, giving an, an output voltage that is proportional to the amount of light. So this is a very nice photo detector using a photodiode producing a voltage signal that is proportional to the uh, uh, photon flux. And so concluding, the, the photoconductive mode is very good because uh, V output is proportional to the photon flux, but the bad uh, side, the, the downside of it is that uh, it uh, requires a power supply to uh, reverse bias the junction. Now, uh, let's uh, uh, comment a little bit now on the photovoltaic mode. So, uh, uh, in the photovoltaic mode, as we've uh, seen, what we do is that we operate in the region where the IDVD is nonlinear. And so, we could um, uh, solve the problem graphically uh, uh, of, you know, finding the... Uh, where is the circuit in the end going to work? Uh, but this means that we need to have exactly the IDVD curve, so the data for that quadra quadrant. Okay. And uh, remember that we need the IDVD data at that specific illumination we are interested in. Okay. To be able to find exactly the final operating point of the circuit. Oh, um, in this case of the photovoltaic mode, as we've seen, will VD uh, will be a nonlinear function of ISC. We know that. 
um, we know that uh, uh, VD is related um, to ISC through the you know the relation of the photodiodes characteristic that is uh, you know this one here. So for a given i that is given by that final operating point that we find with the load line and so on and so forth, uh, v can be calculated from this. Uh, reversing this formula. So V will be related in a nonlinear way to obviously I, but also ISC. Uh, ISC is the bit that is proportional to the photon flux, you remember. So this means that if VD, sorry, let me go back to that point. So if VD is related in a nonlinear way to ISC, this means that VD is also related in a nonlinear way to the photon uh, flux. And this means that uh, uh, because V output, remember V output in the photovoltaic mode is equal to VD. Uh, we, we had said it previously. And so this means that V output in photovoltaic mode is nonlinearly related to the photon flux. This is not really the best choice when we are talking about detecting, uh, uh, creating a sensor that detects lights, light. Okay, so VD, as you can see here, uh, I've, I've reversed now the formula for the, the IV characteristic of the photodiode for a given uh, ID. Uh, and as you can see, it is non-linearly related to ISC. Okay. Uh, so, and that's obviously not very good. So in conclusion, uh, 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 for the photovoltaic mode, the output is non-linear related to the photon flux, which is not always a good idea, but has a very simple circuit. And this is something that in some cases is important. Okay, uh, the, the next thing we would, uh, we will see, uh, we would like to see for the photodiode is the piecewise linear approximation of the photodiode. In reality, uh, as we've said today, the photodiode is also photo uh, the, the photodiode and the solar cell are the, fact, the same thing, and so we will see this in a moment in the solar cells. Okay, this concludes what uh, I had left uh, regarding the photodiode, and then we discussed, uh, if you remember, the solar cells. So we uh, um, we obviously understand now that we've discussed photoconducting mode and photovoltaic mode more in detail why the solar cell is operated in photovoltaic mode. Uh, so the circuit we have in our mind is to connect our uh, solar cell uh, to a load in, in this way. And, uh, and uh, so we've... Um, We've seen all the, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the basic stuff about the solar cell. So we've said it's uh, effectively a photodiode. So everything we've said for the photodiode holds true exactly the same for the solar cell. Uh, simply the solar cell is a much bigger photodiode, if you like. Uh, so, um, and um, the only thing we really focused on is the fact that uh, in the photo, in the solar cell, because we are uh, we are aiming to operate it in the photovoltaic mode, we really focus on this quadrant of the of the of the IV characteristic of the solar cell, uh, and uh, and so if you remember, we uh, defined uh, um, quantities like the fill factor. And, uh, and uh, at the very end, also the uh, power conversion efficiency. Um, and we said um, briefly that uh, um, unlike uh, what happens in the LED, uh, where the power conversion efficiency, the power efficiency um, is um, roughly equal to eta e, uh, in this case, actually, there is a nonlinear relation between. Uh, uh, there is a relation for sure, but is not perfectly linear, uh, and this comes up uh, because of this relation. If you see, if you remember to what we said today, we, we did mention this uh, uh, at the very end of the second part of the lecture. Now. Um, 
Okay. So uh, we did say that uh, when we define, um, uh, when we deal with a solar cell, something very important that we need to, to, to define is the, uh, uh, to the best operating condition that maximize the, maximizes the power output. Uh, and this is uh, done by identifying Vm and Im such that uh, the product v time the absolute value of i is maximum and we discussed today that this is done effectively by having the exact data points and uh, effectively going through the process of calculating the power for related to all these data points and picking up the one that makes uh, maximizes the power and so we define in this ways in this way i m and v m now uh, these uh, two points now so let us say that we have identified Vm and Im. Now, the condition, the optimum conditions that maximize the power output uh, of the of the of the uh, solar cell to the load also actually define which is the load that must be used. I would stress must to make sure that indeed the circuit operates at Vm and Im. Indeed, we had seen when we j just a few minutes ago we discussed the photovoltaic operation mode that uh, uh, um, the, the the load line in the photovoltaic operation mode is actually defined by this equation, and so this means that if we aim to use the solar cell to uh, uh, generate some energy and so pass some current through a load and we want to maximize that uh, energy tra energy transfer then this means that RL should be such that this load line passes through the point individuated by uh, uh, IM and IM and VM. So this means that uh, uh, minus 1 over RL should be IM over VM. There is no choice. This is the only way to make sure that uh, the the final device will have this as operating point. And so RL must be, and I stress must be, VM over IM for that specific solar cell. So, for example, let us say that a solar cell has uh, ISC equal 1 amp, and uh, an open circuit voltage of 0 0.9 and say that we found somebody gave us the data and we found that the optimum conditions that maximize the output power uh, toward the load is VM 0 0.7 volts and IM minus 0 0.7 amp so as you can see clearly VM and IM if VM is positive and IM is this we are clearly in this quadrant of the uh, IV characteristic of the solar cell, which as we now understood is the photovoltaic operating mode. So uh, let us assume that uh, the intensity of the uh, light coming from the sun, for example, is 100 watts per square meter. This is what is also called the average solar intensity. We will see this later uh, in a moment. And uh, let us assume that the active area of the solar cell is this much. So we can uh, calculate the power of the photons uh, by multiplying the intensity of the light with the area of the solar cell. Uh, and this gives 10 watts. And so we can calculate the, full f the filling factor uh, for the solar cell, which is Vm time Im divided by Voc time Isc. And so putting the numbers in, Vm 0 0.7, the absolute value of Im is 0 0.7, Voc is 0 0.9, and Isc is 1 amp. And so we get this quantity, and so finally 0 0.54 or 54%, so, which is all right. And we can also calculate the power conversion efficiency, eta p for the solar cell which is the maximum power output divided by the photon power uh, which is uh, this quantity so this is relatively small 4.9 uh, percent 
and, uh, and finally we can calculate the uh, load that must be used to ensure that the, the device is working at um, um, is, is, is providing the load with the maximum uh, 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 with the maximum power. So the load to be used that must be used is uh, uh, Vm over Im, which is one ohm. Okay. So this is just uh, uh, to understand how also important is the choice of the load uh, we attach our solar panel to to make sure that we maximize the, uh, the, if, if, uh, the, the way that we are using the energy produced by the solar cell. Okay. So uh, at this point, let me say a few words about the solar spectrum. So obviously, uh, the solar cells are made, must be made and tuned to uh, uh, maximize, to be more efficient in the absorption of light coming from the sun. And so uh, we need to know a little bit about the solar spectrum. So um, one of the actual uh, um, uh, important factor that influences the, the uh, power efficiency, the power conversion efficiency of the solar cell is how well, they, how efficiently they use the actual entire spectrum. And, in, and in turning it into electricity. So here we can see the solar spectrum uh, uh, in, on this side uh, as a function of lambda and on this side as a function of energy. Uh, so on, 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 on this side we see um, on, on the y-axis is the power spectrum so uh, watts per square meter um, and here is the wavelength so um, there are several plots each one related to uh, what am stands stands for air mass zero air mass one so several different conditions let's say of density of the atmosphere eff effectively uh, it, it, it doesn't matter too much to, for us. What is important is that to see, to realize that the solar spectrum spans from, you know, a little bit below 0.2 micrometers, so 200 nanometers, uh, has a peak in the visible, obviously, and then uh, has a long tail uh, into the near infrared, uh, or, you know, few microns um, wavelength. In terms of energy, uh, uh, now, actually, on this plot, we are not seeing the power is actually the photon flux. So it's effectively power uh, divided by the corresponding energy of the photons being transmitted. So it's, it's, it, it, it is a kind of, uh, um, it is obviously related to, to this plot, but it's kind of modulated in intensity because we are dividing by the energy of the photon. Nevertheless, uh, we see, uh, you know, a kind of shape that is uh, again with a peak and a tail and um, I've indicated on both plots uh, where UV starts or ends and the visible and so on and so forth. So we see anyway that the solar spectrum is made, comprises UV, visible and infrared. And that's really the uh, what is important here to to, to remember. Uh, and, uh, so as you can see in terms of energy we go really from you know few tens of EV to, uh, you know, a little bit above, you know, uh, 3.5, let's say, EV or so. Um, so we can, uh, measurements that uh, have been made and uh, uh, demonstrate that at the peak solar intensity, uh, remember intensity is watts, uh, per square meter at sea level is around uh, 1,100 1, watts per square meter. So this is at uh, when the sun is uh, perpendicular to the surface and so on and so forth. So if you take the average in one day, uh, the average solar intensity is actually 100 watts per square meter. Okay, so kind of uh, these are numbers to uh, that is nice to keep in mind. Um, now we have seen that. The sorry, 
we have seen that the responsivity of a pin junction as a photodetector is actually uh, has this uh, shape here and uh, and uh, here r is only high when uh, the energy of the photons is close to the band gap so if, when the energy is higher then the photons are not efficiently used that's what we we also discussed today so what do we do in this case how do we use better these uh, these photons well the solution is to use a stack of solar cells uh, in the solar spectrum there are photons with energies that span a very wide range so i want to use all of them as much as i can so the idea is to stack solar cells each tuned to absorb well a specific part of the solar spectrum okay so these solar cells are called tandem solar cells we can stack two or more here below i can show you an example of how we make a solar cell that is aimed at detecting uh, um, in, in the, the entire solar spectrum so a tandem solar cell made by stacking three effectively pn junctions and so uh, uh, so if this is the uh, a very a very rough uh, uh, representation of the solar spectrum the intensity of the light coming and the wavelength lambda so uv's are here uh, visible and ir so i could make a stack of solar cells in this way so the first stack pn junction made in such a way with a semiconductor that has a, a very large band gap like 2.5 and this will absorb tune to absorb uv effectively so this will remove from the solar spectrum this part of the spectrum this will be absorbed they won't continue it will be absorbed here uh, the rest of the solar spectrum will continue because these photons have an energy that is smaller than the band gap of the first solar cell and so they are not absorbed they continue and so the the green line here represents the visible they are absorbed in the second cell so the, as you can see that each cell is separated here i indicated with an insulator okay and so on and so forth so the the, the visible is absorbed at this point using a, a semiconductor with a, an energy gap of around 1.5 you can see that 1.5 uh, uh, is around the beginning between infrared and visible uh, okay somewhere there let's say so uh, and then finally the last the deepest uh, uh, pn junction solar cell uh, is uh, is the one that absorbs in the infrared and so with a band gap of 0 0.5 for example okay so this uh, this is a solar cell would be able to effectively use the entire solar spectrum and in the end these are actually the solar cells that if ever been interested uh, if you if you look online you know those uh, fantastic solar cells with the very high uh, power conversion efficiencies are all uh, using this uh, technique to increase the power conversion efficiency in, so it's all about really using very well the entire solar spectrum so finally uh, regarding the solar cell the last thing i wanted to mention uh, this actually is, is for both photodiodes and solar cells uh, this is very important so please make sure you 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 um, you understand it uh, we've touched it many times also for the pn junction in general and so on so we, we we do this here is the piecewise equivalent linear circuit for the photodiode and solar cell so we um realized that a photodiode or a solar cell effectively is a pn junction with the added uh, a current generator due to uh, uh, photo photo generated uh, uh, carriers and so the equivalent circuit for the solar cell is effectively this one here uh, uh, current generator that generated generates isc which is uh, uh, directly proportional to the uh, photon flux and then the, uh, uh, the 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 ideal uh, shot key 
uh, uh, diode, uh, which is the pn junction. Uh, and so in this way, we know we discussed that the IV characteristic of this device is effectively this one. Okay, so this is what we've been saying up until now regarding photodiode and solar cell. So now the question is, which is the, uh, um, the piecewise linear approximation of we circuit uh, we, we could use for the solar cell? So uh, what we need to do to do that is simply uh, replace the pn junction, the ideal uh, pn junction we have here, with one of the piecewise linear approximation we've seen up until now. So there are we've seen different at the different level of complexities. So it's up to us to decide which one. We've seen the two zone non-resistive, the two zone, and the three zone. So obviously the most accurate is the three zone. So let us use uh, the most accurate, uh, which is the the three zone. And so the piecewise equivalent circuit for the solar cell is this one here. So this is the externally uh, external voltage we apply to the photodiode or solar cell, the current flowing into it, and this is our uh, equivalent circuit. So now, uh, uh, if you remember when we deal with uh, uh, p uh, piecewise equivalent uh, circuits, uh, th this is a process that effectively comprises three steps. So one is the actual e e equivalent circuit, first, po first uh, step. Uh, the second step is the analytical formulas uh, that relate uh, current to voltage. And this is uh, what we are doing here effectively. So we, uh, the, the, the analytical formulas that uh, result from this equivalent circuit is actually this one here. And the, the last part is uh, uh, the, the plot. Uh, how would this look like? And that's how it would look like. Uh, one thing to note here is that when, when, when in, in dark situation, when ISC is zero, uh, the, the red line here represents the, 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 what you would get from this, um, from this equivalent circuit. Well, in presence of light, you would get the red curve. Uh, the uh, funny thing, let's say, to note in this uh, uh, approximation uh, that we are doing of the, 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 the solar cell is that uh, this, this, uh, this uh, uh, approximation provides a VOC that is bigger than VBI. Uh, we've spent quite some time today uh, saying that VOC is always, for a solar cell is all, or a photodiode, is always uh, between zero and VBI. So obviously this is something that may look weird, but it's just the result of the very you know, crude approximations we are doing here of this extremely nonlinear component. So, so no, no surprise there will be something, you know, that may look a bit odd, but that's fine. You know, it, it's absolutely fine. There is no, no big trouble. We know it's an approximation. It's, it's absolutely fine. Uh, so, uh, every time we, we, we use a piecewise linear approximation, uh, let us try uh, to learn how to demonstrate that, you know, indeed, this circuit uh, represent, is represented by these formulas, for example. And so the plot is that one. Okay, so let's try uh, and demonstrate that, indeed, uh, this circuit is related to this uh, formula that relate I with, uh, with V. Okay in this way. So to demonstrate that, uh, uh, we do always uh, uh, the, the known stuff. So, uh, so to demonstrate that, sorry. So let us demonstrate that for the above circuit A, the relation between I and V is given by uh, the equations we saw in B. So to do that, so this was, this is the piecewise equivalent circuit. Uh, we always start with uh, doing KVL for uh, branch where we have our uh, ideal 
uh, uh, switches, ideal diodes, we call them. Uh, so uh, KVL1 for the first branch, which is uh, this one here. So um, the, the, the potential from here to here is either V or we go across the branch. So V must be equal to, uh, according to the definition of IR, R, 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 I, R minus, you can see that uh, I, I'm measuring the voltages from here to here, and then from here to here. So this is the, the voltage across the PN junction, this, this, sorry, this ideal diode is actually uh, taken in the opposite way. So this, that's why I put here minus VDR. <laughs> And now, according to the definition of uh, these ideal switches, so if we assume that IR is zero, which means that DR, this diode, is off, so it's an open circuit, if you remember, uh, uh, then in this case, we know that VDR from here to here must be negative. Okay, VDR, remember, is taken. As, as I've indicated here with this uh, 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 plus and minus. So under these circumstances, from KVL, KVL1, uh, if we drop this term, because IR is, we, are, we are working on the assumption at the moment that IR is zero, so we have that V is equal minus VDR. And so this, because VDR must be negative due to the assumption we made, VDR must be negative, and so V must be positive. So, in conclusion, if V is positive, DR is off. And so, if V is negative, DR is on. So, uh, remember, we've said it many times, when we have to deal with these equivalent circuits when the, where there are these ideal switches, uh, we always, uh, and there are more than one, like in this case, there is DR and DF, uh, we need to try and find a way to relate the external voltage V to whether uh, the, the diode, the, the specific diode is on or off. So that's why we are doing this, uh, this story here. And so we found our result uh, for DR here. And then we do the same for the second branch. That's what KVL2 is about. And so we write that in this case, if you look at the circuit, uh, uh, from this point to this point, we have the voltage is V, but is also V must be equal to the voltage between this and this, plus this and this, plus this and this. And so this ends up being that, this quantity. And so again, if we, if we work under the assumption that IF is zero, which means that the F is off, this means that the VDF must be smaller than zero. And then from, uh, uh, from KVL2, we can drop this term. And so V must be equal to this quantity. So under the assumption we are working with, that is IF is zero and so DF is off, VDF must be negative. But VDF from here is V minus VBI. So V minus VBI must be negative. And so V must be smaller than VBI. So concluding, we realize that if V is smaller than VBI, the F must be off. Or if you like, if V is bigger than VBI, the F must be on. So now we have these two. Sorry, I, I hope they fit together on the screen. So we found these two conditions that will now allow us to divide the the possible values of V into several regions. And we now have a way to say whether uh, in, in a for a specific value of V, uh, DR is on or off and DF is on or off. Okay, that's why we did this. So let us start. So we identified clearly from, from this uh, uh, result that one important point is on the V axis is zero, and uh, on the uh, and also VBI. So what I have in my mind is that the V axis is being divided in three regions. In this way, okay. So let's start from 
let us assume that V is bigger than VBI. So if V is bigger than VBI, DF is on, but DR is off, because if V is bigger than zero, and so bigger than VBI, even better, uh, uh, DR is off. So we know already that if V is bigger than VBI, DF will be on and DR will be off. So we can redraw the circuit. If DR is off, we can th this circuit, this branch is an open circuit, so it doesn't play any role. And so we, we can redraw the circuit. DF is on, so it can be replaced by a short circuit. And so we can redraw the circuit in this way. And now we can analyze the circuit, normally as we would always do. So we can, in this case, it's useful to use this node and say, so we've named this current I already, uh, this already is IF, this is ISC. And so using KCL in that node, we have that I plus ISC must be equal to the outgoing current IF. That's it. And also we have KVL2, that is for the for this branch. And we have that V must be equal to RFIF plus VBI. And so uh, um, we can replace we we can replace IF with I plus ISC, and that's what I've done here. And so we can now uh, um, uh, invert this formula to find I equal something with V, and so I must be equal V minus VBI over R minus ISC, which is exactly. Uh, this part. So we've just demonstrated that the first part of these uh, analytical formulas is correct. And so we go on now. So uh, if V is between 0 and VBI, DF is off because V is smaller than VBI, so DF must be off. And uh, DR is also off because uh, V is still positive and the DR must be off in that case. So we can, uh, we, we, need, we basically means that the old, both diodes, the ideal diodes, uh, switches uh, are all open circuits and so these branches can be removed. And so effectively the circuit is just as simple as this. So I is minus ISC. The current flows in this, ISC goes in this direction. Uh, I is being taken, uh, going in the other one. So I is minus ISC. That's very simple. And so, but as you can see, this demonstrates the second part. And finally, the last uh, bit. So if V is smaller than zero, so DF is obviously still off because uh, DF is off if V is smaller than VBI actually. But now that V is negative, DR is, DR is on. And so if we go back to the initial circuit, uh, DF is off, so this is an open circuit, so the branch can be actually not considered. And this is now a short circuit. And so the final circuit in this case is this one here. So just the reverse resistor for reverse bias and ISC. And so again, same story, we can use IC, KCL in this node and uh, uh, we can write uh, obviously this equation. We apply KVL, which in this case is absolutely uh, obvious, it's just Ohm's law. So we replace, sorry, we replace IR in here and so we obtain this formula and we then uh, uh, ex, uh, we, we calculate, we invert this formula to find I. And so I uh, as a function of V is, is this. And this also demonstrates the last part, which is this one here. So this concludes uh, what I wanted to tell you. Uh, 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 regarding the to complete what 
the theoretical part, let's say, of today's lecture. So photodiodes and the solar cell, that uh, the bits that I had left out. And uh, so uh, at this point, I will uh, go over some uh, examples, uh, the applications that I had mentioned to you. Um, Uh, the applications uh, I wanted to talk to you about are uh, uh, the, uh, the the first one. Sorry, uh, the first one uh, just to stay on uh, you know uh, photo detectors and so on. Uh, I wanted to uh, talk to you about uh, uh, photoconductors and uh, and um, and then briefly. Uh, uh, the second application was more in general on PN junctions, and uh, I wanted to show you the, you know, remember the AC-DC adapter using the Zener diode. So just to stay on photodetectors, uh, and uh, so uh, the, the the other type of detectors, simple detectors that uh, um, we could talk about talk about uh, together with photodiodes are photoconductors. So photoconductors is simply a piece of semiconductor. And uh, as we've we've already uh, you know uh, discussed these things uh, when we did uh, 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 generation recombination in chapter two actually, so we already know a lot of things uh, about how you know a piece of semiconductor uh, uh, could be used as a light sensitive device as a photo detector. And uh, uh, indeed, if we if we if we have in our mind this type of device, so uh, our uh, we have a piece of a semiconductor which is this uh, little slab, let's say here, uh, attached to two electrodes. Uh, imagine that everything sits on a piece of insulator. And uh, let us assume that uh, L is the length of the piece of uh, semiconductor, W the width, and D the depth. And uh, we call P, PH, the power of the photons that are hitting the semiconductor. Let us assume that this is an N-type semiconductor for uh, simplicity, as the one that we were uh, dealing with uh, when we were uh, uh, doing that application in the generation recombination uh, section. So what we said at the time is that if we assume that the semiconductor is thin enough um, so that effectively GL, the generation rate, is effectively constant throughout the, 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 the bulk also of this piece of semiconductor, uh, things are much more simpler in this way to, to analyze. Uh, we had seen that when light is off, you know, the density of uh, NN, the, the density of uh, uh, electrons in the in this n type uh, semiconductor is nn0 so the thermodynamic equilibrium value and pn is actually pn0 which is n i squared over nn0 and uh, because generally pn uh, is in this case uh, pn0 is extremely small because this is n type so the, this, the, these two quantities may differ by you know, 15 orders of magnitude, effectively the conductivity of this piece of material, which we demonstrated when we did the mobility and drift for a piece of semiconductor, the conductivity can be written uh, in this way. Uh, but uh, because PN0 is effectively neglectable, we, 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 negligible, sorry, is negligible, uh, uh, this is effectively zero. So really the conductivity is given by this quantity when there is no light hitting the, say, the, the conductor. When light is on, though, and so photons are uh, hitting the, 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 the semiconductor, we are now generating extra help ho electron hole pairs. Uh, we are still working under the low injection uh, condition, uh, low level injection condition, conditions, which means that, yes, uh, the new in, in this non equilibrium situation, the density of electrons is nn0 plus delta n, but let us assume that this is roughly still nn0 effectively. Uh, on the other hand, the pn is effectively uh, pn0 plus delta p, but delta p now is extremely big compared to pn0, so effectively pn, pn0 is negligible, and so delta p we demonstrated at the time is gl 
time tau p where tau p is the uh, lifetime of the uh, minority carriers and so uh, pn now is not anymore negligible because it's gl tau p and this can be actually big as we've uh, at, uh, at uh, uh, discussed uh, several times now and so the conductivity when the light is on is actually now given by all this this as you can see is the conductivity when the system was with no light but now there is this additional term so generally the conductivity of the semiconductor when the light is on is bigger than the conductivity when it is off we could also uh, uh, say that the delta sigma when the light goes on which is obviously the difference between sigma l on minus sigma l off is effectively given by this and this is interesting because as you can see the delta sigma is related to delta p and delta p is directly related to the photons that are hitting the uh, the, the semiconductor uh, so we, we start to see that just by using a, a piece of semiconductor as a light sensitive device the the quantity that is directly related to the the uh, uh, photon flux is effectively delta sigma this delta sigma and uh, to further emphasize this what we could do is to actually write sigma in general of this piece of semiconductor could be written as the sigma when this is off plus delta sigma if there is light on okay uh, now from the definition now of the different quantities quantities at play here what we could do is actually find a link between gl pph phh phph etc indeed gl is if you remember the number this is generation rate due to light so is the number of electron holes created per cubic uh, centimeter per second or per unit volume per second and so simply even by you know looking at the units i would say clearly guess that uh, uh, this must be the power of the photons hitting the the, the beam uh, hitting the, the the semiconductor this is in remembering watts so it's um, energy per second uh, uh, divided by the energy of the photons so this transfer pph over energy of the photons is effectively photons per second now and uh, divide also this quantity by the volume interested by the beam so uh, up above we we define the semiconductor as a, a piece of material with dimension lwd so lwd is the volume so this whole quantity already has the right dimensions photons hitting photons uh, per unit volume per second now each photon if it reaches the photons that reach the active area will generate uh, an electron hole pair uh, and so to take into account the fact that not all photons will reach the active area and all, not all electron hole pairs eventually will uh, escape the device and so will be available outside we could simply multiply now this quantity by eta e which is the external quantum efficiency and so this entire quantity must be indeed equal to gl under these conditions uh, this could also be written in a more uh, um, uh, simplified uh, fashion uh, uh, in this way uh, uh, phi the photon flux divided by d the depth of the semiconductor time the the uh, external quantum efficiency uh, uh, remember that uh, what we are using here is the relation between the photon flux and the power of the beam uh, go back to where we defined it uh, but in few words as you can see LW has disappeared because LW is the area that interested by the beam that is hitting the 
the surface of the semiconductor, as you can see, L by W. So this area is the area that uh, is interested by the beam. And that's why uh, uh, it disappears when we, 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 we go from using PPH to f f the photon flux. So now, we found now GL expressed in terms of all the other uh, in interesting quantities related to the to the to the beam uh, at steady state we know from what we did in generation recombination that gl must be equal to u and u is uh, this stuff here and the numerator remember is not what we call delta p so really gl must be equal to delta p or tau p so delta p must be equal to gl tau p This is obviously a result we had already, if you remember, anticipated uh, here. Huh? And uh, so uh, we can substitute GL with uh, the quantity we have uh, realized previously. And so we find that delta P is actually related, as we have, I had already anticipated, uh, with the photon flux and the external quantum efficiency and all the rest. So, uh, delta sigma, the quantity delta sigma we said previously, is actually this here. Epsilon, so E, sorry, E, the mobility of the holes in this case, time, uh, all these things. And so, as we can see, is delta sigma that carries the information of the actual response of the system to uh, the uh, uh, light excitation, the photon flux. And is actually proportional to that. And that's, again, linear response. Very important. A very nice uh, detector. So, um, recalling now that sigma represents the link between current density J, by definition, uh, and, the, and the electric field. So, if we assume that the electric field is constant, and uh, we write sigma as we suggested above for our semiconductor as sigma L off plus a delta sigma in case there is light, then we, we end up realizing that J is actually given by uh, uh, J, a dark current J, plus a certain delta J that is caused by the presence of light eventually, where J dark is uh, sigma L off time E, and this uh, sigma L off, remember, was this, uh, while delta J is uh, because of the delta sigma when light is on, and uh, is, is this one here. Uh, uh, and so if we Generally, we prefer to use uh, current rather than J, and so if we prefer to use uh, I and, and V, uh, we need to remember that I is J time area. We need to multiply J by the cross-section of the, con the, the conductor we are interested in. So for the current, remember, in this kind of the, 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 the device, the current is flowing in this way. So the area we need to look at in this case for current conduction is D times W. Okay, so be careful. And so that's why here I wrote that I is uh, J times D times W, while V is E times L. And so if we keep this in, this in mind, we can transform this equation into I and V, and so we can write that uh, delta i is uh, this stuff. Okay, once you uh, uh, you 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 take into account uh, the factors d w and l that are involved in transforming uh, j into i and uh, e into v. And so you get this. And so if you trans if you uh, if you if you um, uh, substitute delta sigma with the formula we had found uh, above, you end up with this relation between delta i due to light and v and all the other parameters at play. And uh, the, sa the same thing could be done for i dark 
and so if you do for, for effectively for this relation here and uh, this could be transformed uh, into this one here with i and v and so we have a relation also for i dark and v and so uh, what what we notice now from you know these these kind of nice uh, relations is that delta i is proportional yes to v obviously uh, the, the piece of semiconductor acts as a resistor no surprise in that uh, but also delta i is proportional to now the photon flux that's the linear response we were talking about uh, on the other hand i dark responds only to v is proportional only to v obviously and this because also in the dark the 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 um, uh, semiconductor is a resistor and so in the end uh, the total current ever flowing in my uh, photoconductor is i dark plus delta i in case due to light and so this can be written as 1 over r l off plus 1 over a certain delta r time v because both remember both these contributions depend on v as we said so uh, m both could be written as v over a certain resistor so we can call uh, one r l off and one delta r in case the light is on and uh, as you can see uh, because v appears in both can be factorized and so i have uh, the, the two resistors appear in a sum in this way now this really reminds me the result of a parallel combination uh, the total resistor is 1 over r tot and the, the, the only situation when 1 over r tot is this this kind of combination is when the two resistors are in parallel so this means uh, and this is actually an important uh, kind of you know nice thing to to realize is that an, an, the, an, this analytical relationship is suggesting me how the equivalent circuit of the photoconductor should be. So my photoconductor, which is this, could be represented in, in, as an equivalent circuit as this one here. As two resistors in parallel, one representing the dark current situation and the other the eventual presence of light. And this is a variable resistor variable depending on how much light is hitting the photoconductor so this concludes this bit about the the photoconductor i wanted to show you so you can do very nice uh, also uh, photosensitive uh, uh, detectors also simply with a piece of semiconductor uh, the the last application i wanted to discuss with you is the uh, as I mentioned, a general application on how to further improve our AC-DC adapter based on use of, using of PN junctions, uh, uh, this time adding also a Zener diode. So, in general, uh, um, uh, a power supply, this is what effectively now we will end up doing, a power supply. A power supply, what it does, it transforms AC uh, power into DC power okay so uh, to achieve this transformation we generally need four stages uh, a transformer so we we have a, a an AC power input first of all say the socket line uh, the socket at home uh, where we have AC uh, uh, electricity we need a transformer then we need a rectifying circuit then we need a filter now we have seen in the application i've shown you last week in the post lecture video uh, we've seen already how these three stages work together the last stage we need is a regulator so something that really will lock the voltage and make it extremely stable now and finally everything will uh, uh, be uh, uh, attached to our application, our load resistor, or whatever that represents. So uh, we've already seen uh, uh, the first three blocks. Uh, uh, and uh, so the, the, the whole aim of what I'm going to show you now is actually 
to see how now to use a Zener diode to make uh, a very simple regulator that will then allow to us to make a very simple a CDC uh, uh, power supply a transformer, uh, sorry, uh, adapter. So our first, let's say, basic power supply. So I'm not going again into the detail of things. We've seen the transformer. So I've just put here again uh, the, the, the summarized, let's say, the, the, the major uh, ideas uh, regarding the rectifier. The best one we've seen was uh, the bridge idea. And uh, uh, here is how uh, the, the, this type of rectifier actually will, uh, will respond. Uh, so the, the, the output, as you can see, is actually V in minus 2 VBI, because uh, if you remember, uh, uh, no matter the, 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 the direction of the current flowing through uh, the diodes, the current will always pass through two uh, uh, PN junctions. This means that um, two of the PN, two PN junctions are, must be on. If two PN junctions are on, this means that there are two VBI uh, um, uh, generators in, uh, that come into play. And that's why uh, the maximum output of uh, voltage from uh, on RL here is V in minus two VBI. Anyway, we, we had seen uh, uh, the, 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 um, this bridge and also the filter. Last time we focused on a very simple filter, which was the use of just a cap sorry a capacitor and uh, and uh, and the last time if you remember uh, we ended up you know saying you know, this could be already a nice um, uh, rectifying uh, sorry ACD a rudimental ACDC adapter um, and this would work if you remember something like that and we also explained uh, uh, that the ripple uh, would be this much um, and so on and so forth. Uh, a better uh, actual filter would be represented by the so-called pi section, which is a, a, a filter made in this way. I won't go into the details of this. If you are curious, just you know, have a look at the at the notes, uh, uh, and uh, uh, you know, have a look. Uh, um, but effectively, the idea is that this kind of uh, filter. Uh, will uh, because the role of the filter is to try and uh, keep the voltage uh, uh, to, to not let the drop the voltage drop too much and that's what you achieve here because you have two capacitors and both will try to discharge but this one will try to discharge through R1 also not only the load remember the load is somewhere here uh, so C2 will discharge through the air, but this one will discharge through the air one as well. And so it, it, this helps in delaying further the discharge effect. Anyway, uh, here, uh, I actually, if you are an extremely curious uh, uh, student, uh, I, I advise you to go through, to have a look at my uh, derivation here of why, uh, how we could analyze uh, this circuit, this circuit here to understand indeed the, what would be the discharge transient. Uh, uh, so uh, I'm not going to, to, to say anything about this. You know, I've, I've, I've done it here. I would just scroll uh, gently so that if you want, you can stop and have a look, but is only really if you're very curious. Uh, So and uh, and uh, the last uh, really part, the interesting part we want to, I would like to discuss here is the uh, regulator. So how do we do the regulator? How do we can make a very simple regulator uh, using the simplest thing we can use, which is the Zener diode, a Zener diode, one single Zener diode. So uh, uh, the Zener diode used in breakdown operation uh, uh, means that I'm thinking of you know my Zener diode reverse biased in this way. So when I connect the, the, um, the Zener diode in this way, assuming that here the, po the, 
voltage here is positive and here is negative. So as you can see, I'm reverse biasing the, the diode. And so eventually a large current could flow uh, in this, uh, if, if we are entering the Zener operation. Now, the IV characteristic, uh, if, if I'm using this type of connection, so note, uh, this is the I as I've taken it here, and this is the V as I've I'm measuring it here, so with the positive here and the negative here. So I'm effectively flipping now the the uh, IV characteristic that we've seen for the Zener diode, both in I, because remember that I normally in a PN junction we assume is going like that, and the voltage is taking like that. So we are actually reversing the direction of I now and reversing the way we measure V. So it's flipping vertically and horizontally. And so you can realize that the IV characteristic now of this device in this configuration uh, like, looks like that now. And this is the Zener operation region. Okay. So we realize that if in this device, in this configuration, I ever is bigger than zero, this means that V will be more or less V zeta, V Z, sorry. Because, you know, if the current is positive, I may be here. If I was here, still, you know, the voltage is extremely close to V Z because R Z, remember, is extremely small. So this line is extremely steep. That's the point. So, uh, in order to understand how the Zener diode could actually be used to create a constant voltage output, we could look at the following circuit. So we can look at this circuit here. So, uh, if we consider uh, the circuit here above, uh, sorry, just a moment. So, if we consider, um, sorry, so if we consider this circuit, um, uh, we know that uh, if we are operating the Zener diode in breakdown operation, then uh, the, 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 we can replace the Zener diode here with uh, the branch that uh, refers to the uh, breakdown uh, <coughs> operating part of the of the of the Zener diode. So by uh, looking at uh, at uh, uh, going back to the to the Zener diode, we can um, remember that what we need to do is effectively to replace um, uh, the Zener diode with this uh, branch here, effectively. So, uh, at this point, uh, let us. Uh, um, what would we would we would we would like to do uh, now is uh, analyze the circuit. Uh, but also uh, uh, try to make sure that we uh, uh, always are indeed in the breakdown of, uh, in the breakdown operation. So we would like also to make sure which is the condition that must be satisfied to make sure that uh, this substitution, substituting this just with that, which only is the uh, piecewise linear approximation for the breakdown operation, is is remains true. So. Um, uh, here uh, before, so before we connect the load resistor, so let us imagine that we still have not connected this. Uh, as you can see, I did not connect it uh, yet. Um, so uh, we can apply KVL and uh, uh, calculate, uh, we can write that, uh, as you can see, V is equal to R uh, IZ. Obviously, uh, at this point, I, uh, if you don't connect RL, I Z is equal to I, and I've written it uh, here. Sorry, here as well. Okay, so I can write V equal R R I Z uh, plus R Z I Z plus V D Z. Remember, V D Z is measured 
like that always and vz is the uh, um, general potential and uh, so uh, as usual, uh, when we are dealing with this uh, equivalent circuit, piecewise equivalent circuit, so we assume if we, if we assume that i z is zero, which means that d z is off, this means dz, v d z must be negative, and so from uh, uh, K V L, uh, uh, we can basically drop drop these uh, two components, and so we can write that v is v d z plus v z, uh, which means that because v, we said uh, here above that in this assumption v dz must be negative, so this means that v minus vz must be negative from this KVL. And so v must be smaller than vz. So, uh, summarizing, uh, if we don't connect RL, uh, if v is smaller than vz, dz is off. While uh, if v is bigger than vz, dz is on which means we are in the breakdown operating region. Okay, so uh, in the breakdown operating regime, which is V bigger than VZ, and so DZ is on, uh, from the KVL we can calculate the current. And the current IZ uh, from, from uh, this one here effectively, the, uh, with uh, VDZ uh, equals zero, because when DZ is on, uh, remember that uh, VdZ is zero, and so we can easily see that this is the current IZ, and so uh, having IZ, we can calculate VO, uh, which is um, RZ IZ uh, plus VZ, and so we substitute IZ into here, and so we can see that what we get is the V output is RZ over R plus RZ, time v minus vz plus vz. Uh, if we remember that rz is very very small and probably much smaller than r, then we can realize that this quantity here must be very very small and so effectively we realize that v output is very close to vz. That's what we anticipated briefly uh, previously. So if we don't connect RL uh, this is the situation. Let us see now what happens when we connect a load to the to the circuit. So after we connect RL, what will happen is that uh, if we connect RL, now we should expect that the current I splits into IZ and an IL that flows here. So IL will be not zero anymore, obviously. And so uh, we apply KVL and KCL and all uh, the um, relations we know. So from KVL we can say that, uh, remember we have named this node A, so we can write that VA is VZ plus RZ, RZ, IZ. Uh, we, we are assuming here that uh, the, um, the, 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 the DZ is on, okay, so the, because uh, as we said we are only considering that branch because we are assuming we are in the breakdown operation, so we are assuming DZ is on, so DZ uh, we are assuming is a short circuit and so that's why I'm writing KVL in this uh, simplified form here. Now and this must be also equal to RLIL and so uh, uh, from this equality, I can either express IL in terms of IZ or IZ in terms of IL. Okay, let's keep these two aside for a moment. And at the same time, I can also write KVL for, so, so this was KVL for the branch of the Zener diode. And we can also write a KVL for the branch related to the, to the load. And uh, uh, as you can see, we can write um, uh, sorry that uh, v um, v must be equal to R i plus V a. So that's what I've done here. V equal R i plus V a. 
well it's not related to the load this is general uh, for the for the entire circuit and then we have also kcl sorry kcl uh, for node a uh, i is equal i z plus i l so uh, what we can try to do now is to find uh, how IL and IZ depend from V. Uh, so V is the voltage that we are effectively applying to the circuit, if you like, the input voltage. And so let's see how IZ and IL depend on, on that voltage. And so uh, how do we do this? Uh, well, we use um, so you see that VA it can be either this quantity or VA can be either this also this quantity. Okay. So uh, we use uh, um, this KVL substitute I with IZ IL and VA uh, with the uh, with the uh, with the term that contains what we want to find. So let's say that, let's uh, try to find IL, a relation between IL and V first. So uh, I take that um, uh, KVL here and substitute with VA, VA with this, and uh, I with this, and uh, obviously you see you get I get this quantity here and uh, I need to make it disappear effectively IZ or express IZ in terms of IL and uh, we had done that here that's why I had put it aside so you can see that I can now take this and substitute it here and so I get a relationship where there is only IL now which we can now try to invert and after some algebra uh, we realize that we can create a term that is uh, you know, much more compact and is the parallel of all these components. Anyway, just algebra. And so in the end, we can write IL in this way as a function of the external input voltage V. Uh, similarly, using a similar approach, we can find uh, the same thing for IZ. So we express IZ as a function of V. And so, uh, concluding, we have found IL and IZ as a function of the input voltage V, which we can uh, actually simplify even further if we work under the realistic assumption that RZ is extremely small, much, much smaller than R in the circuit or RL. So if, if we assume this, which is obviously very realistic, uh, we can f simplify enormously these uh, relationships. So IL becomes simply this quantity here. So as you can see, there is a VZ over RL, which is a constant value, uh, plus uh, something multiplied by V. And the same for IZ. IZ is uh, uh, V over R, V is the input, minus a constant. Okay, now um, remember that to remain in the to, to, to make sure that the Zener diode remains in the breakdown operation. Let's go back. This current uh, must be negative, must be sorry. This current, as I've indicated it, must be positive. Okay. So what I call here IZ must be positive. Uh, remember that normally we would indicate in a PN junction, we indicate the positive current goes in this way. Uh, obviously in the, in the Zener operation, the current is negative. Uh, it flows in this direction, uh, in the, the, the same direction that we've assumed for the circuit. So that's why I'm saying that what we call in this circuit IZ as here, uh, uh, if we are operating the, the Zener diode in the Zener uh, uh, condition, this IZ, as I've indicated here, must be positive. So, so let us suppose that IZ must be positive. So we now want to find out uh, uh, how much should be V 
compared to the parameters of the circuit to make sure that we remain in the breakdown operation, general operation. So um, if we look at IZ, IZ now under the assumption we've made that the red is very small, IZ is uh, this thing here, uh, actually this thing here. And so we can write that IZ bigger than zero means this. And so V must be bigger than this quantity. So at this point, it all depends on the low value of the load we are using as compared to the other resistance R that was in the circuit. So we need to break down in two possibilities. So if RL is much bigger than R, effectively this parallel here, when you do the parallel between something small and something big, in this case RL would be big, well the parallel is very close to R in this case, so R over R is 1, this means V bigger than VZ. So this means that if the load is big enough, much bigger than R, then we will be in the breakdown operation if V is bigger than VZ, which is generally what we want from this kind of, uh, of uh, um, uh, circuit use of the Zener diode, if you like. And in this particular case, if we continue, IZ, we can further simplify IZ now. So we can write simply IZ in this way, because we are effectively saying that this, sorry, uh, that uh, this parallel here is effectively R. And so we can factorize, and so we can write IZ in this way. And... Um, And also we can calculate IL uh, from uh, uh, this relation here. Oh, sorry. This relation here. Uh, assuming that RL is much bigger than, uh, than R. And so obviously this term can effectively be dropped. That's why I have the tile is effective VZ over RL. So what we see from this uh, uh, in this condition is that uh, effectively IZL, IZ is much bigger than IL. Okay. So uh, uh, when RL is B much bigger than R, effectively the current passing through the Zener uh, branch is way bigger than IL. Okay. So the load is, let's say, drawing very little current from the uh, uh, Zener branch, subtracting very little. So the Zener branch works at its optimum, and that's why also V, uh, the condition is effectively V bigger than VZ. Let's say that the circuit sees very little the existence of this uh, RL bra branch of the load. Uh, the things are very different when we, if we assume the opposite situation, that is RL is much smaller than R. So in this situation, from, uh, from, 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 from this uh, uh, condition here, uh, the condition becomes, in this situation, well, the denominator becomes RL now, because it's RL the smaller of the two. And so this is the condition now. So we are in Zener operation if V is bigger than Vz time R over RL. So if RL is much smaller than R, you understand that actually now we are moving the point at which the Zener operation starts to kick on, kick in at higher voltages because this Vz time something that now this number is big because RL we are assuming RL is much smaller than R. So this number is big. A number that is big times Vz means a high voltage. So we need to, uh, only at very high, a much higher voltages now we enter the breakdown uh, operation of the Zener diode. And, uh, <coughs> and so uh, uh, what, what will be happening now? Well, uh, from the qualitative point of view, if RL is much smaller than R, let's go back to, So what we are saying is we have attached RL to the circuit. RZ is very small, so we could, you know, qualitatively we could imagine this is a short. This is also already shorted. We are assuming that we are in the breakdown operation. So really, 
here there is a huge current IZ, but now if RL is also very small, now this means that also IL will tend to be big. So we are subtracting a lot of the current that used to pass in IZ is now also going, a huge current is going into RL. That's why we are altering the equilibrium of the circuit, circuit when RL is much smaller uh, than R effectively. We are, uh, we are causing a, a huge current to be drawn into the load. And so that's why we end up uh, in this uh, you know, peculiar situation where you know, the system would be in breakdown operation if only if V is bigger than uh, quite a larger voltage. Sorry, uh, it was this the condition. Uh, quite a larger voltage now. And uh, actually, if we do the calculation, uh, uh, what we can see is that uh, uh, IL obviously is um, uh, VZ over RL. Uh, as previously, things don't uh, don't change because uh, if we go here, if uh, and it's now R is bigger than RL, uh, and so we have uh, um, RZ uh, over uh, over R, and so this term is still uh, negligible, and so still IL is VZ over RL. And so that's what we have here. And, uh, but uh, IZ now becomes IZ is, uh, this term now is, uh, is uh, we said RL is much smaller than R, so this is RL now. This term becomes RL in this case. And so uh, that's what I've written here. And so, but we see that this is effectively IL. And so we see effectively now in the equations what I just told you, that uh, IL is being drawn from IZ. So IZ is uh, decreasing, if you like, is a bit small, is, is slightly smaller because uh, uh, IL uh, uh, is being drawn into the, into the load resistor. And so... Um, so it is not a good idea to uh, make RL much smaller than R. So this circuit operates well when RL is bigger than R. That's the point. Anyway, let us now find uh, uh, V output. So V output for this circuit is, as we said it, defined it, is the voltage measured across RL in this case. Once we connect RL, is this voltage here. So V output is RL IL, and so uh, IL, uh, the general uh, uh, the formula was this one here. So we can put it in, and we find the general formula for VO, which is this one here. So now, uh, if we assume, no, so no, the question is, is this one, uh, which is very interesting. So we said that we would like to put this uh, Zener thing at the end of our rudimental ACDC adapter that we develop, we had developed already last week in our uh, circuit application with the PN junction. Uh, so let us assume, if you remember, that uh, the, the, in that uh, circuit application, the output of out of the filter effectively, it was suffering from a little bit of ripple, of, a, of, a, of a, let's say, of oscillation. And so let us assume that V, the, the input here is indicated as V, that V suffers from a small ripple, delta V. This means that V varies between V and V minus delta V. Okay, so if we put this into the equation for V output here, that V may be also V minus delta V, and then uh, we, we, we should end up demonstrating that then V output must be, v, uh, must be some V output minus delta V output. 
And so uh, uh, this is uh, uh, obtained simply by substituting uh, these things into the formula. So Vz plus Rz over R time V minus delta V. And so we obtain uh, a, a term that contains V. And this is what, as you can see, uh, this quantity here is exactly what we call the VO, the output. And so that we, 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 we call it object VO. And the, the, there is an additional term now related to delta V, the ripple. Uh, and this is the, 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 the corresponding ripple now in output that we get into the output of the now uh, additional part related to the zener. So uh, uh, delta V, O, as you can see, is this quantity. Remember that Rz is very small. And so this means that the in input ripple is further attenuated, if you like, by the presence of the zener. This is a very cool uh, uh, um, result now. And we see why the zener is so important as a voltage regulator. And it's actually it's small, very small Rz that does the whole job. As you can see, this quantity is much smaller than one. This means that delta V is attenuated a lot. And so the output ripple will be much, much smaller than the ripple that was coming out of the filter stage, let's say. So an input ripple is further reduced by a factor Rz over R in output from the, from the Zener diode, because Rz is much smaller than R. And um, obviously, uh, the, 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 the regulator we've analyzed here is made just with a simple uh, Zener diode uh, has a, obviously an important drawback uh, that is that uh, uh, when we are operating the system uh, in the breakdown regime we've demonstrated that IZ is much bigger than IL so um, there is a huge current that is passing through the Zener uh, branch to make sure that uh, we are regulating the voltage on the load where a very sm a much much smaller current now is passing so th this uh, regulator is actually very power inefficient okay there are more clever ways of doing uh, regulators uh, but it shows the principle okay and especially the w why we want to use the zener diode to do this and so in the end uh, if we wanted to complete our uh, rudimental AC-DCA power adapter, it, uh, where we can see all the stages now, it, it, we could represent it like this. So our final effectively power supply is uh, this one. You see the transformer, the rect full wave rectifier, the filter, and the regulator made simply with a Zener, with a Zener diode. And this is then attached to the load. Uh, where now a DC, a, a, a very good now DC stabilized voltage is applied to the load. Okay, so that's uh, all I wanted to uh, discuss with you regarding these applications. Uh, thanks for uh, listening and watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.